Welcome. Yesterday, I promised I would share the five things I wish I'd known before I started my four kids on violin lessons. Let's dive in. One of my daughters showed a real gift for playing the violin. We started her off with an amazing teacher who unfortunately moved away. So, I signed her up for lessons at a very expensive and prestigious music school, hoping it would give her an advantage. However, the teacher turned out to be more of a musician than a teacher. Not everyone has the expertise in both violin and understanding children's learning styles. We need to remember that we are teaching children, not just aspiring professionals. I could have accepted my mistake and not enrolled her in lessons again. But the problem was that my daughter started experiencing intense back pain. We went from doctor to doctor, and their explanations for her pain seemed far-fetched. Eventually, we took her to a children's doctor at a university hospital, who was shocked to discover a tumor inside her spine. It needed to be surgically removed, and it was a challenging procedure. Due to the pain she was experiencing, she couldn't stand for long periods of time, which meant putting her violin lessons on hold. Unfortunately, the school insisted that we pay for all the missed lessons, present and future, and refused to make any exceptions. The lesson I learned is that the study of music isn't seen as an after-school activity. For this school, it was a business. Learning the violin doesn't have to be expensive. Here are some tips to help you save money while still pursuing your musical dream. Number 1. Utilize online resources. Many online platforms offer free or affordable violin lessons. For example, Scales Aren't Just a Fish Thing provides free videos, audio, and downloadable sheet music with the purchase of a workbook that caters to different learning styles. Number 2. Rent Before Buying For my private beginner students, I would loan them a violin. In my experience, many students didn't appreciate the instrument when it was loaned to them, leading to misuse. There should be some level of investment in the journey. Number 3. Look for community centers, local music schools, or universities that offer group lessons or workshops at a lower cost. In the past, I have taught large groups through parks and recreation programs. And number 4. Get creative. For instance, use a tennis ball on the end of your bow to improve control and balance. Although I use the last 10 minutes of my lessons to play music theory card games, which makes the kids love lessons so much that they come even if they are sick, I provide music theory card games as templates, so students can play the games on their own with as many participants as they want. By thinking outside the box, you can save money while mastering this beautiful instrument. If you found these tips helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe.